This video came about as a result of several posts on social media from 2391 and 18th edition students. The difficulty they were having was manipulating or rearranging electrical formulas. If they were given a formula to use and the formula was already rearranged for them, then no problem. But when the question demanded a manipulation of what they already had, that's where it fell to pieces. A formula is only as good as the person using it. And it will be an even better formula if you can manipulate the numbers to your own advantage. And this video will show you how easy it is to rearrange any formula, especially the ones that you need to use in your exams and assessments. Let's look at this. We can begin with some very simple formulas, although in truth, they are all easy to rearrange if you follow the steps. Look at this very basic formula, A equals BC. This can also be written as A equals B times C, which is how I prefer to write it. Let's say that we know A and we know B. Can we rearrange the formula to find C? We need to find a way to have C on its own, and we call this making C the subject of the formula. Let's find C then. If A equals B times C, and we already know that A equals 10 and B equals 5, the rest is easy. Think of the equals sign as the middle of a seesaw. To keep the seesaw balanced, if we do something to one side, we must do something to the other. In this case, we need to move B away from C. B is on the top on the right, so move it to the bottom on the left. C is now on its own, and C is equal to A divided by B. Here it is again. We want to find C. The original formula tells us that A equals B times C. Move B from the top on the right to the bottom on the left to leave C on its own. Put the numbers in for A and B, and we have 10 over 5. Our answer is C equals 2, and all formulas come down to simple steps like this. If we only know A and C, and need to find the value of B, we would use the same process. Move C to the bottom on the left to leave B on its own. Put in some numbers, and we have B equals 10 over 2, which is 5. And we use this exact same method for some essential electrical formulas. We can try manipulating Ohm's law, a key formula for us. We are all familiar with the Ohm's law triangle, so let's try manipulating numbers without the triangle. Ohm's law is an absolute must know. In my opinion, you cannot get by without knowing Ohm's law. Put simply, the voltage in a circuit is equal to the current in the circuit multiplied by the resistance of the circuit. So V equals I times R, or just V equals I R. Most times, we'll know the voltage and the resistance and need to calculate the current, or I. We need I on its own, so move R out of the way. How do we do this? Move R from the top right to the bottom left. Job done. Our rearranged formula is V over R equals I. Voltage divided by resistance equals current. And to make R the subject, move I out of the way as shown. The resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. Exactly the same method can be applied when manipulating power law. You will use this formula more times than you can count during your career as an electrician. When we install equipment, it usually comes with a rating plate marked in watts or kilowatts, but the rating plate doesn't tell us the size of fuse or breaker that we need. We need to use the power law formula to calculate the amps that the device will take. Power law is another must-know formula. P equals V times I. Power is equal to the voltage multiplied by the current. If we want to know the voltage, move the I from the top on one side to the bottom on the other. And to find the current, what size fuse do I need? Move the V out of the way to leave I for current on its own. If we know the power from the rating plate, and we know that the UK standard voltage is 230 to 240 volts, we can work out the fuse size very easily. In an exam situation, always use 230 volts as the voltage. 
On site, I would use 240 volts for my calculations because this is what you will actually measure. Loss of rating plates will give the power of the appliance in kilowatts, thousands of watts. Some big industrial equipment might be rated in megawatts. Kilowatts and megawatts should be converted to watts before making the calculations. If it's in kilowatts, then multiply by 1000 to find the watts. And multiply megawatts by 1 million to uncover the watts. Notice that kilowatts uses a small k, but megawatts uses a big M. We can do a quick calculation now, the sort of thing you might be asked in an exam. Calculate the current flowing in a 230 volt circuit if the power is 4.37 kilowatts. We need to find I, the current, but first change the kilowatts into watts by multiplying by 1000. So 4.37 kilowatts becomes 4370 watts. Now, if P equals V times I, and we need I on its own, move V to the other side. This leaves us with I on its own. I equals P divided by V. 4,370 watts divided by 230 volts gives us 19 amps of current. Now we can choose our fuse. Some formulas also have additions or subtractions in them. How do we deal with these? Follow the rules and it's easy. Look at this simple example. What is the value of B if we have the formula A equals B times C minus D? This must be solved in a certain order. Get the order wrong and you'll have the wrong answer. Let's look. Start with the original formula. Our intention is to get B on its own. B and C are multiplied together, so they must stay together until we move D out of the way. Move D to the other side. But, because this is now a plus or minus, it stays on the top row after it's moved. Only multiplications move between top and bottom. We now have A plus D on one side equal to B times C on the other. Next, we can move the C to the bottom of the left hand side and we have A plus D over C equals B. Or we could say B equals A plus D over C. It's the same thing. We've now rearranged or transposed the formula to make B the subject. Let's put some numbers in. In the green box, we're told that A is 10, C is 5, and D is also 5. We need to calculate B. The rest is easy now. 10 plus 5 is 15. Divide this by 5, and we have our answer, B is 3. But what is the value of B if the formula contained plus D instead of minus D? Pay attention to the plus and minus signs in formulas. They make a difference to the answer. Here's our new formula. A equals B times C plus D. And we need to find B. This rearrangement starts with plus D. And when plus D moves to the other side, it becomes minus D. And then C can move just as before. Our rearranged formula is now B equals A minus D over C. Let's put some numbers in and see what happens. We've made B the subject of the formula and we'll use the same numbers as before. This time B equals 10 minus 5 and then divided by 5. We then have 5 over 5 which is 1. B is equal to 1. Look at these two formulas that we've just used. In these examples, using the same values for the letters, the only difference was the one formula started with minus D and the other with plus D. For the first example, our answer was B equals 3 and for the second, B was 1. The same numbers for A, C and D, but different answers. So be certain that you change the plus or minus signs when you change sides. And here is an addition formula that we should all know. It will appear in electrical exams so very often. ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. Although ZE doesn't have a sign, it is implied that this is a plus value. When ZE moves to the left hand side, it changes sign and becomes minus ZE. So we have ZS 
minus ZE equals R1 plus R2, essential electrical knowledge. Then we can have formulas with squares or square roots. Sounds complicated, but follow the rules and it really is easy. Consider the adiabatic equation, another exam favourite. You must know how to use and manipulate this formula. The formulas are shown on pages 98 and 199 of the Brown Amendment 2 Wiring Regs book. Can you rearrange this? Can you get from T equals something to S equals something without using the book? We can do this. We can begin with the formula on page 98. T for time equals K squared times S squared divided by I squared. The first thing to do is to move the I squared to the opposite side. It's on the bottom, so it must go on the top. Next step, we're trying to get S on its own, and at the moment it is S squared. If we square root both sides, we will remove the squares from the K and the S. Now we have the square root of I squared times T equals K times S. Now it's easy. Move the K to the bottom on the opposite side, to leave S on its own. S is the square root of I squared times T over K, the same as page 199, but without using the book. It's important that you are able to use this formula correctly, so let's have a little calculation to do. This is the sort of thing to expect in an exam or assessment. Using the adiabatic equation shown, find S, the minimum size earth conductor to satisfy the requirements for the data given in the red box. Then, just as in an exam, choose the minimum cable size from those offered A, B, C or D. Pause the video whilst you attempt an answer. The solution is on the next slide. We will use the formula unchanged. Follow the working out in the yellow box. Work everything out that's beneath the square root first. Now we have the square root of 196,000. Square root this, and the calculation is now 442.718 divided by 115. And the answer, the minimum size for the earth conductor, is 3.85 square millimetres. As this is the minimum size, we should choose the nearest size that is equal to or greater than 3.85 which is 4 square millimetre conductor, answer C. So easy if you follow a methodical approach. Can we work the formula backwards and end up where we started from on page 98? Can we rearrange the S formula to make T the subject? Here's the formula for S, our starting point. The first thing to do is to move the K. This is on the bottom on the right, so it moves to the top on the left. Now we need to remove the square root from the right hand side by squaring both sides. So we have k squared times s squared equals i squared times t. We want t on its own, so move the i squared from the top right to the bottom left. And now we have t on its own. t equals k squared times s squared divided by i squared. Now let's put some numbers to it. Different numbers this time. We need to find the value of t. We are asked to calculate the time, how long it will take for the cable to reach its limiting temperature using the data supplied in the blue box above. And then choose an appropriate answer from the four options available. Pause the video whilst you attempt the question. The answer is on the next slide. Follow our working out and the method we've used. Squares of numbers are just the number multiplied by itself. 10 squared is just 10 multiplied by 10, and shown here is an easy way to calculate with squares of numbers. You should have an answer of about 1.29 seconds, answer D, depending how you round it up or down. The answer is telling us that, with this amount of fault current, a 10 mm earth conductor will reach its 70 degree temperature limit in a little over one second. And lastly, for these essential formulas, we can take a look at voltage drop in standard copper cables. Shown here 
is the standard voltage drop formula. You are required to rearrange the formula and make L the subject. Then calculate the maximum permitted length L for this circuit using the data in the blue box. And finally, choose the most appropriate answer from the red box. Pause the video whilst you work through the task. Answers on the next slide. And here is our very easy transposition. Move the thousand from the bottom right to the top left. Then move MVAM and IB from the top right to the bottom left. This now leaves L on its own. And that is how easy it is to rearrange the voltage drop formula. Now put in the numbers given in the blue box. Follow the working out in the yellow box and you should arrive at an answer of about 39.93 meters. Your answer might vary by a tiny amount depending on the rounding off, but it will always be very obvious which is the most appropriate answer. And for us, 39.93 is so very close to 40 meters that answer B has to be the correct choice. In the exam, if you've made the correct calculation, it will always be obvious which is the correct answer. Manipulating formulas relies on several things. Choosing the right formula to start with is crucial and be very methodical about what you do. A number can move from the top row to the bottom row on the opposite side or vice versa. Multiplications become divisions and divisions become multiplications. An addition on one side becomes a subtraction when it moves to the other side. And subtractions become additions when they change sides. A change on one side means there must be a change on the other side to balance things out. Make one change at a time. If you try to do the whole thing in one attempt, you may go wrong. And write everything down as you go along. That way, it's easy to find where you went wrong if your answer doesn't match any of the answer choices. The more that you practice these formulas, the easier it will be to use them. And this slide shows you the transposition of some important electrical calculations. They are not only useful calculations, knowing them and being able to use them is crucial. We will leave a note in the introduction to this video telling you how to download a printable PDF of this table. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.